The New World Halloween event is making its way back into Eternum. This event is going to start on October the 18th and last all the way through November the 14th. In this video, we're going to go over a complete guide to the event in case you're unaware of how this thing works. And we're going to talk about what's changed from last year to this year. So the name of the Halloween event is called Night Vale Hollow, and it's marked by a mysterious season of change when shades and ghouls gather in dark places. It's a time when the people adorn their houses with jack-o'-lanterns and wear frightful masks. This is done to ward off the Pumpkinites, and Balfazu, the Marquis of Terror, is a blasphemous creature that has unleashed a dreadful curse, the Curse of Shapes. The sorcery transforms ordinary pumpkins into creatures known as Pumpkinites. They are Balfazu's hellish minions, and they must be stopped before they turn the island into a living nightmare. So essentially, in this event, much like a lot of the other New World events, you're going to find a world boss. In this case, his name is Balfazu. You're going to kill him. You're going to take what's called Demon's Icker. You're going to take that Icker. You're going to throw it into a Night Vale Cauldron in any settlement. And then this is going to reward you for your efforts. The ultimate goal here is to obtain a bunch of tokens. You're going to utilize those tokens at the event shop to purchase some rewards, much like a lot of the other events that you see coming into the game. So in order to begin the event, you simply need to make your way to any settlement in Eternum. You're going to find one of the cauldrons. It's going to be pretty easy to find because it's going to be indicated on your map by a pumpkin symbol. Once you're there, you're going to need to speak with an NPC next to the cauldron named Salvatore. He's going to give you a quest called Balfazu's Fall. That quest is going to send you on a journey to defeat the world boss. And then whenever you complete the quest and kill the world boss, you're going to receive a Night Vale Hollow Cache. Whenever you open this cache, it's going to reward you with five Night Vale tokens, two random Night Vale Hollow patterns, and access to the Night Vale Sentinel, which is the last tier section of the event shop. During the 2023 Night Vale event, you're going to also be able to transform into some of your favorite characters like Captain Thorpe to celebrate the spooky season. This was not available last year. This is a brand new addition to the event this year. So the costumes can be obtained for the duration of the event from the town centerpieces, and you can get them from Balfazu. The full selection of costumes is going to be Captain Thorpe, Adiana, the Anubian Reaver, and Lost Monarch. So once you've obtained a costume and put it on, you can then go search each town for hidden treat baskets. These have a 10% chance to contain some new Balfazu armor pieces. We're not real sure what those armor pieces are just yet. And two Night Vale tokens, and you can get those three times every day. And a new item candy so the candy is going to be a limited time consumable and it's going to come in four flavors we're not 100 percent positive what the four flavors do just yet but they do say that some of the candy is going to help you greatly with the event activities and then some of the other candy may have some pretty unexpected consequences so it should be pretty fun to toy around with the candy and see exactly what that does hopefully we get some good laughs out of the event from eating that stuff so it's also worth noting here that items marked with daily limits are going to reset at 5 a.m. local time. So for example, if you grab the third set of Night Vale tokens from the treat baskets at 4.58 a.m., you're going to be able to earn another set three minutes later at 5.01 a.m., much like any other daily reset thing in the game. And the world boss Balfazu is located in six zones, Ebenscale Reach, Brightwood, Great Cleave, Weaver's Fin, Eden Grove, and Morningdale. Those were the locations of the 2022 event. I don't see those changing a whole lot. If they do, they'll probably add one more location or something along those lines. But historically, they have kept these events in the same spot whenever they reintroduce them into the game. So I'd fully expect these locations to remain the same. If there is a change in event location or if Balfazu is added to another spot, we'll make sure to update that over on newworldmap.com and you'll have a full location list of where the boss spawns. So make sure to check that out whenever the event goes live. And if you've never fought Balfazu before, there are a few mechanics to be aware of. So he's a very large world boss that has over 23 million health. So it's recommended for a large group of 10 or more to be involved in the encounter. However, whenever this goes live, I'm sure it's going to be getting zerged down. So you shouldn't have any problem at all finding more than 10 people to go kill Balfazu. So it should be a fairly quick and easy fight. But the boss does have quite a lot of damage mitigation. He has 45% physical and 40% elemental damage mitigation. So this is going to make your standard attacks pretty weak against him. But he does have a stamina bar. And once it's broken, your standard attacks are then going to deal significantly more damage. So one of the mechanics of this fight is to break the stamina bar. So in order to do that, you want to kill the small pumpkin creatures that you see running around the area. They're going to leave a pumpkin head on the ground. Then you just pick that pumpkin head up and throw it at the boss. This is going to deal some damage, but more importantly, it's going to deal a lot of stamina damage to the boss. So once the stamina bar is broken and the boss is laying still, this is whenever you're going to want to have everyone that's out there go attack the boss because that's your window to do a ton of damage to him. 
There's also going to be ads that he's going to spawn in throughout the encounter that you need to be aware of. So there's going to be this mob called a Gourd Spewer. So whenever you kill the Gourd Spewer, he's going to drop a healing circle on the ground. You can go stand in that circle and it's going to remove any debuff applied to you from the boss. And you're going to receive 5% of your max health every two seconds. There's also another mob called a Calabasher. Much like the Gourd Spewer, he will also drop a healing circle on the ground. You can stand in that circle to remove any debuff and you'll get 10% of your max health every two seconds. And then Balfazoo has a couple of other mechanics that you should be aware of. He has this big vine reach ability where he's going to stretch out his vine arm. He's going to deal damage to anybody in its way. You can block or dodge this attack. And this is a pretty standard attack that he's going to perform throughout the duration of the fight. He also performs what I like to call demonic waves. They're these big green ring waves that's going to spawn from the outer area of the arena. And then they're going to make their way in towards the boss. So if you get hit by a ring, it's going to deal a lot of damage to you. But the rings can be dodged or blocked. So just make sure you're aware of that mechanic. He will also perform a vacuum mechanic where he pulls the entire group into himself. And the entire arena is going to light up green whenever this happens. So just be aware of that. But all in all, it's not a difficult encounter. The main thing is to break the stamina bar with the pumpkins. And then once that's done, just DPS him down. And again, I would fully imagine there's going to be a ton of people there. So you shouldn't have any problem taking down the boss multiple times a day. And then whenever you defeat Balfazoo, you're going to have a chance to earn some new armor pieces that are available with the 2023 event. So these can be earned up to five times each day. And again, we're not real sure what those armor pieces are going to be just yet. But you can also earn up to three costumes a day and you're rewarded with an icker. So you can throw that icker in the cauldron to get your cash. The three costumes each day are then used, as we talked about before, to put on and then go trick or treating in each of the settlements. And then unlike any of the other events in Eternum, the Halloween event only has two ranks to achieve to access the entire store. A lot of the other events have multiple tiers. You kind of have to grind out those tiers. With this event, you really don't have to do that. As we mentioned above, you can just do the quest once and you'll unlock the full store or just go kill the boss and you'll unlock it as well. It's very easy to do. But then obviously, in order to purchase things from the store, you're going to need to obtain a bunch of Night Vale tokens. So in order to obtain those tokens, you need to, of course, be killing Balfazoo. And then whenever you kill the boss, you're going to be rewarded with the Icker. You take that Icker to the settlement, toss it into the event cauldron, and you are going to get the cash. Whenever you open this event cash, you are going to get either seven 10 or 13 tokens you can also receive a bag of cauldron coins that's going to contain up to 200 coins depending on your character level and you can receive that bag of coin up to three times per day opening a cash can also reward you with a weapon pattern and those same patterns can be purchased from the halloween event npc salvatore you'll also receive a diamond gypsum whenever you throw the icker into the cauldron and then once you've accumulated enough tokens you can use those tokens to purchase items from salvatore this is the end game of the event get tokens buy items so the items in the store consist of weapon and shield patterns that you're going to have skins emotes house decorations and this year there's going to be gear score 675 weapon and shield patterns in the sentinel rank as well as some new cosmetics that you can earn during last year's event you were able to earn one emote one housing item and five armor skins this year several new items are being added to the store there's now going to be four new additional housing items you can acquire four new armor skins two new emotes and a tent skin so make sure you're on the lookout for those whenever you go back to the store so you don't miss out on those items during this event. And the weapon patterns have also changed this year. You can get up to 675 gear score patterns from the store and each of the patterns is going to come locked with two perks. You're going to receive a random third perk whenever you craft the item and each weapon pattern also comes locked with a specific attribute relevant to that weapon. So for example, the flail is going to come locked with focus. The Void Gauntlet is going to have Intelligence, and the Musket is going to be locked with Dexterity, and so on. And then the Locked Perk that's going to be on every single weapon, plus the Round Shield, is Flame Attunement and Refreshing Move. And then, of course, you get that random third perk. The Life Staff's a little bit different. It's going to have Blessed and Refreshing Move on there. And then the Kite Shield and the Tower Shield come with Flame Conditioning and Refreshing Move. Now, all that information with the perk and attribute information is according to NWDB.com on the PTR branch. So it could change before it goes live, but I don't think it will. I would fully expect these to be the perks that we get on the weapons or the locked perks that we get on the weapon patterns whenever this event goes live on October the 18th. So that's going to do it for this and boys and girls. The Night Vale Hollow Halloween event is making its way back into a tournament on October the 18th. This year is going to be a little bit different with the costumes and the trick or treat. And that's probably the main new thing that's been added in. Of course, along with the things you can get from the store that are new, the new cosmetics, new housing items and all of that fun stuff. 
that we can now get from Salvatore as well. But thank you guys so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you enjoy New World, enjoy New World content, please make sure to like and subscribe. Greatly appreciate that as well. And of course, we stream every single Monday, 8 o'clock a.m. CST over twitch.tv slash BDLG. And then again on Friday, 8 o'clock a.m. CST as well. We have a ton of fun over there. We play a lot of New World and we will, of course, be playing through Night Vale Hollow and running this event every day whenever this goes live. Thank you guys again. I appreciate it. We'll see you in the next one.